Ah, uh, hello. Thank you for coming today. Um, I'm just getting out some paint tubes because I have what I think is going to be um, a pretty interesting color challenge, let's say. Problem is a word I was, I was going to say problem, but it's probably more of a challenge. Let me just get the messages up so I can see what's going on. Hmm. So do, um, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, please do say hi. Let me know where you are and if you can hear me and if you can see me okay. Looks to me like everything is working all right. I've got a nice steady stream. Looks like I've got visuals and it looks like I've got sound as well. See you. Um, so yeah, the basic the challenge, color challenge that I'm going to be dealing with in this painting is the orange roses. Okay. So <clears throat> Let me put up the image, a bigger image of the, of the, this is the reference photo, okay? Yeah, true, every painting is a challenge, yeah, very, very true. Um, but this one has a very specific colour challenge to it. I think it's very interesting. The kind of thing that used to, I used to struggle with a lot, and this is one of the things that working with Munsell taught me. Now I understand why I used to struggle with it. And it also means that I can make some hopefully more informed choices about how to address it in this painting. So this painting is um, a commission. It's gonna be fairly large for me. It's a squarish format. It's gonna be um, 60 centimeters wide, I think, and about a bit more than that, about 70 centimeters high. So about that slightly higher than it is wide and this is to fit a particular space on um, the client's wall uh, and she got in touch with me and she'd seen a few of my paintings but one in particular where she really liked the color of the roses and we've had a long kind of discussion where i've been looking for some roses that are the color that she wanted and i finally found them and it's these ones and they're called just joey and they're david austin roses and we put them with some cream roses too and what my client wants is something very vibrant and colorful and bright okay um, and the tricky thing about these particular roses which you can see you no know, that way there <laughs> on this on the other side of the screen is the orange ones because um, they in the lights the chroma is still quite high. In the lightest parts of those orange roses, the chroma is still quite high, but the value is very high as well. So I'm going to switch over onto the palette and I'm going to start experimenting with some mixes so I can hopefully start to understand, like, um, <clears throat> at least evolve a way that I, that I can deal with this. So I've got some fairly high chroma reds and oranges out here already. So the basic problem is, um, I'll show you a Munsell page actually from the Munsell book because that will help to explain it too. So, <clears throat> uh, not that one. This is a page from the Munsell book. So this basically is, this is the range of paint within this particular hue. All these are the same hue. It's an orange red. I won't tell you, that. well, I will tell you the number. It's 2.5 YR. It's basically... A slightly reddish orange, okay. Almost a middle orange, but slightly towards red. And the interesting thing about it is when you get right up to the highest value on this page, which is a value nine in the Monsell scale. So this is the Monsell scale. So we're right up here, value nine. It's almost pretty much the value of lead white paint. Lead white paint is slightly higher value than that, but not very much. Um, and you can see on this page, this is chroma. So from near to gray to very intense color. 
something just fell off. Never mind. Um, so at a value 9, which is a very high value, the lights, the highest chroma I can get is this column here, which you can see if you look down, that's pretty near to grey, you know. Uh, the chroma that I actually want, I took some color notes from these flowers and I've also checked them in um, Michelle's fantastic um, Munsell color matching tool. Michelle, please feel free to drop a link to that in the comments if you want to. I think you should be able to do it. Um, actually, the light parts of these roses, the chroma is up here. The chroma is like quite a bit higher, but at this value in the lights, that's outside the range of paint. I cannot mix that color. It is impossible. I can mix that one, like a value A, to about the right chroma, but I can't quite get this chroma at that value. Okay? So, what can I do? Well, I can drop the value a little bit, you know, so, and then that will allow me to, to have the chroma of the light parts of the roses higher, right? So they will appear brighter, more intense. Remember that I want vibrance, okay? But then if I drop the value of the light parts of all of those orange roses down a step, what happens to all the other roses? What happens to the value of the background and the value of the leaves? Do I need to change those as well? Um, and this is one area where I think having a really good understanding of the, the color space of oil paint, which Munsell can is one way to, to get that, to get a good understanding of the color space of oil paint what you can and can't reach, and how to reach it. Um, <clears throat> it can really help you with a, a problem like this. So let's say I'm going to start off like trying to mix these the, the lighter colors. I'm overheating enough to take this cardio off. I've got too much wood on the fire today. Apologies for the, um, the crackle you probably heard on the mic. So high chroma reds and red oranges. So on the blue red side, I've got quinacridone rose. That's about value five. So it's quite well down in the value range, but it's high chroma. Not where I want to be because it's a blue red. Um, orange red. This is permanent orange. It's a slightly reddish orange. It's um, a slightly higher value. It's like about a value six ish. Very, very high chroma. So that's probably going to be really useful to me because that's about the color range that I want, right? But I also need nice high chroma shadows as well. So I've also got this is transparent red oxide, which gives me a lot of chroma in an orange in a very low value and i've got this out as well this is pyrrole red just to have a look at it really it's from language paints it's a bit more it's somewhere in hue wise it's somewhere in between these two i got it out because i can't find my naphthol red since i've moved house a couple of my paints have disappeared I don't know what I've done with them. Ultramarine blue, I've lost, and naphthol red. Now, normally naphthol red would be my go-to if I want high chroma red oranges. Don't have it. I'm going to try two different whites, right? So I like the handling qualities of lead white. So I'll put some lead white out. And... Um, I'm also going to put some titanium white out because although it's slightly bluish, it is high, it's the highest value that you can get in paint. So I don't know if that comes across this uh, well on the screen, but the main difference between these two whites, <coughs> the difference is, let's say, is this one is slightly, you could say it's slightly warmer, slightly more yellowish, the lead white, and slightly lower value. The titanium white is more bluish and slightly higher value. It's the, also, uh, titanium is more opaque, so it's much stronger in mixes, and um, lead white is a bit more transparent. Just realized what fell over earlier on was my spare value scale, which I want to use. So using a value scale is going to be kind of helpful. So I can check the kind of values that I'm getting. 
just so I can see kind of what I'm reaching, you know. Dan, you got just Joey in your garden. Cool. Can you send me some? <laughs> they cost a fortune, these. They're really nice, though. They're also really big. What it maybe doesn't show so much in the, in the photo, the reference photo. Maybe you can see it, is they're really, really big. Hi, Bruno. Hello, Sylvia. <laughs> Hello, Sam. Alison likes the setup. Yeah, me too. It is nice, isn't it? Hi, Jean. Good to see you too. David says that's huge. You, you, I'm going back up to older comments. So that you must be talking about the size of the painting. Yeah, it is. I mean, for me, I tend not to paint all that big. Um, this is going to be for me is going to be a pretty big painting. But then, you know, in an earlier stage of my life, I used to paint murals. So I'm, <laughs> I'm all right with painting big. I think we'll be okay. Hi, Kathy. Good to see you. You too, Becky. There is no translation, Philippe. Unfortunately, my French isn't up to telling you this in French. There is no translation, I think, because it's live. I think that's why. Jean says, wouldn't using lead white help to preserve the chroma a bit in the higher value? Spot on. Yes, it would. Yes, it would help. <coughs> well, it depends on the hue. So in orange reds, yes. Um, if it was a blue, it would kill the chroma a little. Hello, Irene. I'm glad I'm streaming too. Hi, Anna. Good to see you. Great studio. Thank you. Yeah, it's new. Just moved in to this space. Stephanie, really good to see you. And owe you an email. We'll be getting in touch with you very shortly. Yeah, the, those colours are beautiful, aren't they? Hi, Denise. Michelle says, I just did a set of charts for the student book and was quite surprised that some chips are outside the gamut of a screen. I'd assumed the range would be less than a screen. Yeah, me too. Very much so. Olaf says, the titanium white is brighter than the lead white. It is, to be more precise, it's higher value. Brighter is a tricky word to use with colour, I think. It could be interpreted as meaning um, chroma or, or uh, value. I, I really think it's kind of, people seem to have settled pretty much on Munsell's innovation, which was to describe colour in terms of value, chroma and hue. And it, re it really does help, I think, if, if you kind of, if you stick to those terms and then everybody knows what everybody is talking about. So value-wise, it's light here. Let's mix something and see what happens. So say if I want to be like a value nine, I'll get some lead white out. This would be interesting little test, and that, there's some titanium white. I'm going to get a little bit of this. This is very intense, very high chroma. Little bit of permanent orange, Michael Harding permanent orange. I'm going to put a small amount in. So the hue is nice, you know, it's a reddish orange. That's the kind of colour that I'm after in the light. Some of it might even go a little bit more yellow-orange, but this is a good kind of starting place. Let's see what kind of value I've got there. Yeah, that's like a, an eight and a half. Okay, so let's get some more white, which should be slightly higher than a nine. Yeah and add a little bit of this in and see if I can, what happens with, to the chroma if I've got an actual value nine. I'm gonna reverse these because I've done them the wrong way around. So that's like an eight and a half. This should be about a nine. Yeah, about a nine, but it's, it's close to white. I mean, you know, you can just about see that it's orange, but there's very little chroma there. Let's try with titanium.
So I'm going to need to add quite a bit more of the orange because titanium is opaque. So that's coming down to probably about the same value as this one here, about an eight and a half roughly. And the reason it's useful knowing this because it tells me what, what mixes with what chroma I can get at which range, and that's going to change my paint choices. Not only that, it's going to change how I manage the value balance of the, of the whole painting. Because if I decide that I want higher chroma, so I drop the value of those the light parts of the orange roses, what about the parts of the cream roses that are the same value? Then surely I need to drop those too, right? So that's slightly higher than an eight and a half. Hmm. That's pretty much a nine, which is interesting, maybe slightly lower, because I would have thought it would be the other way around, but the titanium white has kept a little bit more chroma than the lead. So for my very lightest parts, I can get some chroma with titanium white and permanent orange. That is about a value nine, which is a very high value. But what I really want is, I mean, that's still kind of, it's close to white, pretty close to white. So if I check it against this Monsell chip, this is from the big Monsell book of color. It's a different hue, this one. Have I got one closer? Not handy. Slightly different hue, but it'll enable me to check the chroma. So this is a value nine, right? Let's see what I got. The value is slightly lower for sure. A bit more white. Now adding white to raise the value up to a value nine means obviously that I have more white than orange, so there's less of the colorant, so I Lose chroma. Yeah. So that's about, it's starting to disappear on the chip. So that's going to be like about a value nine. I would say chroma wise, it's, it's about the same as the chip. So that's about a chroma two. And I want significantly more than that. So what about if I drop it a whole, let's drop it a whole value step. So this is value eight. So this is, that's more the chroma that I would like, you know, a bit more color. That's the next value step down. See, I mean, a lot of people uh, ask about what's so useful about Monsell. Why should I bother with all of those chips? You know, isn't color relative? And it is, uh, yes it is. But um, I think personally the really the big advantage that I've got from working with Monsell and with the chips is that I have a an internal kind of a mental model, too much white, of the color space of paint. What can be mixed, what colors can be reached and what colors can't. And um, what tube paints will help me get to those colors. So I'm bringing this down a little bit in value and seeing how much color I can have, if you like. It's raising the chroma. You might think of it as being more color, colorful or more intense. I'm just, what I'm actually doing is raising the chroma by dropping the value. So that's value eight. The chroma is very, very close to this. So that's, this is about the chroma that I would want for the light, slightly higher. Let's see what I get with titanium. Use less of that because it's quite powerful, a bit more orange. And this is like one of the you know most powerful staining pigments, this permanent orange. It's really strong. If I tried something like cadmium red, then you know I'd be lost. It's, I wouldn't be able to get any chroma at all because it's not as strong. Sometimes you might not want that. You might want it something which is a little more gentle, easier to mix with, let's say. Value is a little bit low. So I'll bring it back up a little bit.
Now the thing is, these are red oranges, so if it goes towards a yellow orange, I can actually get higher chroma because yellow is very high chroma at a value 8. So the other thing that I can play with is the hue. You know, I could send everything a little bit yellow, but I don't want to do that because in this case, the hue is crucial because, you know, my client has picked this color, you know, and it took a long time to find roses that would suit. She has picked this color that she wants for the flowers, you know. So I can't just go and change it and make it all the oranges more yellow so I can get higher chroma. All right, that is about the right value. And the chroma here is about the same between the two, I would say. So I've managed to get to about a, a chroma 6, what Munsell would call a chroma 6, at a value 8. But in terms of the painting, when I'm just dealing with the values, um, that means that my, my creamish white roses would also need to drop in value as well, right? Otherwise, all my orange roses are going to look dull. They're going to look like lower value. They're going to look like there's less light on them, which we really, really don't want. That would be very bad. <laughs> so that's my problem. Hopefully, I've explained that well enough in this mix. These kind of series of mixes that I've got here. Hmm. So somewhere within here. So at the very highest value, I can get a little bit more chroma out of the titanium. That did surprise me, I suspect, because this is a very red orange. Um, <clears throat> I don't like using titanium so much because I don't like the feel of it. I don't like the handling qualities. I don't like the marks it makes as much as I like lead white. But in my very highest highlights, I can probably use it. But the thing is, by the time I get down to a value 8, which is getting me the chroma that I want, there's not much difference. In fact, I think possibly the lead white is slightly higher chroma even. So by the time you get down to this value, there's nothing to choose between them really in terms of chroma. Hi, Junior. Yeah, Michelle, you know this one, right? Michelle knows. The perennial problem, getting high value and high chroma at the same time. I mean, it depends on your, your hue, doesn't it? Obviously, in the yellows, you can get high chroma and high value. Blues, you're pretty much screwed, <laughs> you know, and reds, um, reds tend to hit their highest chroma, like lower down the value range, like about the middle of the value range. So, I mean, this is a similar kind of hue to what I'm dealing with here. This is a, a red orange, hits its highest chroma at value six, just above the middle of the value range. If this was a red, it would be hitting its highest chroma down here, a four or a five which means you've got to add more white to get it up to the value you want. And by the time you've added that much white, you've lost the chroma. Okay. So I already have a, a, something of an idea of how I'm going to deal with this problem. Um, I'm going to knock the values down so that I can keep the chroma in the lights. And I'm going to have to change the values in the rest of the painting as well um, to see how it all works. Let me mix, try and get an idea of what a, a good shadow colour would be in these roses. Um, for the shadows, I mean, the same thing really, I, I want high chroma, so the, I've got transparent red oxide here. Which is a red orange, so I'm generally in red orange world for these roses. Um, that glazed over white will give me pretty high chroma, probably at about... Um, the value that I want if I allow it to be a little bit transparent. So that is like, that'll be like about a value two. Yeah. So in the shadows, I want to be about a value three. So that will probably be all right, you know. And then around the middle values, it will change quite a bit. See, so if I just mix my shadow and my light together, then I just don't, I don't have very much chroma at all. So this is why you can't just take your light colour and your shadow colour and mix them together and get good chroma, you know. That's like about a value 6. So what I would actually be doing is taking 
this would be too much on its own, which is also about a value six. But if I wanted to add a little bit of chroma to it, I could bring some of that in. Be about the right hue. So around the middle, I can, set, I can get all the chroma I want. Around the middle values, I'm fine. I can have as much chroma as I, as I want around there. Or I can drop it down. You know, that's pretty, pretty easy. Um, the shadows, I can hit the chroma. Where I struggle is right up the top at the lights. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna start thinking about putting some paint on this panel and deciding where I'm gonna go with it because you know n none of this happens in a vacuum. Obviously, it's I need to judge this against the value of the background. I need to judge it against the value of the lead leaves and everything else and the cloth. And also, uh, I have in mind that, um, I don't know if this is a concept that you've come across before, but um, it's something I first came across in a really amazing book called The Practice and Science of Drawing by Harold Speed, which you can download a PDF of for free off the web because it's out of copyright now, because it was written like 100 years ago. Um, and... He talks in that book he talks about different ways of handling value uh, value balance and he talks about the Rembrandt way of handling value where you have a mostly dark painting with some light bits that really sing out or the impressionist way of handling handling value where you have a lighter overall painting so your middle values are higher with a few dark accents in your shadows and that's how Manet painted uh, Monet sorry painted especially in his early years before he got uh, before his eyesight went. And um, <clears throat> I have in mind using that uh, more impressionist value balance for this painting, because I think it will, it will make a, a lighter overall painting. I don't want this painting to get too dark, because again, I'm thinking about what my client wants. She wants vibrance and life. She wants it to be bright and colorful. She doesn't want an old master type painting. And the paintings that she picked out of mine that she liked, that she emailed me, that she showed me, were all my brighter, more colourful ones. Even though, funnily enough, my own work is probably moving away from that now. Into stuff that's more like this. Generally low, low chroma, kind of. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. This is going to be a high chroma painting. So that's a rough light and shadow. Um, I'm going to think about a light and shadow for the cream roses as well. And they're, they are, they're orange as well, but they're kind of a yellow orange. So on the light end, what would I put with that? I don't want to add too much chroma this time. I don't need to go mad with it. Get some more colors out. This is pretty much how I, how I put my palettes out. I don't think, oh, I put the same palette out every time. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying this is how I do it. Um, <laughs> I tend to put out what I think I'm gonna need in order to hit the colors that I want to hit. And I will, like, if I'm just, like, doing a sketch like I am today, like, trying to figure some stuff out, I'll put out colours as I think of them. Now, that's Bright Yellow Lake. It's greenish yellow. It's too green, really, for those... for those cream roses, but there's multiple ways of getting to those colours. I'm going to put some yellow ochre out as well, which is much more orange, but lower chroma. I could use some cadmium. I might use some cadmium as well because that will be less transparent. I may or may not use that. Make a little yellow collection up there. And um, 
I've got raw umber there, which is actually is going to get me really close to what I want in the lights for those roses. So they're going to be. So say say if I decide that my my the lights of my orange roses are going to be about a value eight. It's pretty much what I've got here. That's slightly higher because I've stuck all my mixes together. So I'm going to mix. This is um, raw umber and white. Slightly high at the moment. Going to bring in. Let's try a little bit of cat yellow. Give it a bit more chroma. It's going to be the the tricky thing is I'm just bringing a bit of whatever of these yellows I think I'm going to need. Bring the value down and and still have enough. Chroma at about the right hue. Wants to be more orange. The tricky thing is when I come to paint those cream roses, I actually can hit the value. I can hit the value nine, and it's going to be really tempting to do it. But if I do, I'm going to throw out my. I'm going to throw out my orange roses, so I'm going to have to be consistent if I want to keep the chroma. What I'll probably end up doing is painting most of it with a slightly reduced value range, and then just kind of cheese a couple of bits of it, like just push it a little bit here and there for some highlights. So that should be about a value eight, slightly higher. So that would be a pretty good light color for those. Cream roses. And the shadows, they're slightly, they're going to be slightly higher value, those shadows. Michelle is two is telling me four or five. I'm going to put, I'm going to link this. I don't know if you already linked it, Michelle. Sorry, I need to catch up on the comments, but I'm going to link. This is Michelle's tool and you can put photos into it and it gives you color swatches back. And even if you don't do Munsell, it's pretty useful because um, it shows you Oops, sorry, I'll get it in a minute. It shows you color swatches of a color independent of the subject, and that can be a very useful thing, even if you're not um, a full on monsolite. So I'm going to look on, on that tool that I just linked on Michelle's tool and have a look at the, so you can upload a photo into it, you know, which is incredibly handy. Which I have just done. And I'm, I'm going to spot check a couple of the shadow colors and they're like, they're going to be like value four or value five. This is on the uh, on the cream roses because they're a lighter local than the orange ones, so they'll be um, they'll have slightly lighter value shadows. As a as a general as an average, you know, general kind of average, which is all I'm really looking for. 
And then I basically, I just want as much chroma as I can get in the shadows because at, in the yellows, which they are really, they're yellows, those cream roses. Once you go down the value scale, you get a lot less, uh, you get a lot less chroma available to you. So this is a yellow page from the Munsell book. And you can see here, high value, value eight, that's where it hits its highest chroma. By the time you get down to the shadow values, five and four, chroma is very low. So this is like a, a slightly different problem at the other end of the scale. So if I went in with raw umber, say, um, and I brought it up to the value that I wanted with white, I end up with a very dull color with very low chroma. Um, you might call it muddy, which is what I think people often mean when they talk about muddiness is especially if uh, it's someone who doesn't have a lot of experience with mixing and has thrown all kinds of different things into the mix to try and get where they want to be, a lot of the time you'll find that what happens is the chroma just drops further and further and further until you can't even really tell what the hue is anymore. Um, and then the colour looks very muddy. Well, that's probably been like about a value five. Yeah, it wants to be lower than that. So four to five, I would say, good value for the shadows of those roses. But this, you know, that's very low chroma. That's just raw umber on its own with white. So what about if I took raw umber and then instead of bringing up the value with white, I brought up the value with, say, card yellow. It's going to go green but it's going to have more chroma. Am I still mixing on the, on the screen here? Yeah. Bring it up to about the same value. So I've got some more chroma now, which is nice, but I don't really want those roses to be green in the shadows because what usually happens with something which is very low chroma, like those cream roses, an indoor light anyway, is as you go from the lights to the shadow, the hue shifts slightly towards orange. So all right, let's get some orange. So transparent red oxide, bring that up with cad yellow. And that's a lot more orange, right? But loads of chroma, but it's too orange. And what I actually want is somewhere in between the two. with as much chroma as I can get. And it seems like quite a high chroma color, but it will make sense in the painting. Something like that. I'm not 100% bothered about the hue so much. As long as I know that I'm in the right area, I'm at about the right value. So hopefully we should be somewhere around four or five. Yeah, we're about at value four. And the difference between just doing raw umber and white and getting to the shadow that way that I just did is chroma. So this has very, very little chroma. Some areas do, will want to be lower chroma and some will want to be higher. So that's pretty much where I would start. Like I'm trying to find um, the range, if you like, of color that I want to use for this painting. And I've got that pretty much laid out on the palette now. It's just one way of doing it. I mean, you can, you can totally do this on the fly. And I didn't need the Monsel chips to do any of that. But I think that's a lot of that is because, you know, I've spent a lot of time with them and, and um, it's helped me, as I say, build a kind of a mental, a mental model, if you like. Let me try to catch up with the comments. Because I'm about to, I think I'm about to start putting some paint on the panel. I think I'm kind of pretty much at that stage. I haven't drawn anything out yet. So I just want this to be, really I just want to see how the colors work. You might be surprised at what I'm using. 
for the panel, though. I'll talk about that in a minute. Let me catch up with the comments. Sam says, I just looked up the Monsoor colour book on Pantone. Yeah, it's not cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap. It's like about $1,000, right? <laughs> but I've had mine for about 10 years. <clears throat> and um, I, I'm, I'm not saying you have to go that route, you know. But it has definitely taught me more about colour than anything else. Hello, Sasha. That's all right. Don't apologise. Margaret says, that looks like a big jump from value 9 to 8 on the screen. Um, mm, it is a 9 to an 8, though. I mean, that this isn't a 9. Just probably left that comment a little while ago. These are all like about 8.5 now, probably something like that. Myanmar, wow. I do believe you are the first person from Myanmar ever to be on one of my streams, so welcome. And I am uh, not sure how the grammar of names work in Myanmar, but I will assume that, is it Sori is your first name? Anyway, welcome. I probably pronounced that wrong, and I'm sorry. Maya says, hello, Maya, nice to see you. This is the essence of mixing. Your articulation is so clear. Thank you. Sort of like balancing a quadratic equation. Yeah. I mean, you can think clearly about color. <coughs> And you can also just go with it and you can do anything in between or some areas of a painting that are very carefully worked out. You know, when I actually start painting this, I'm going to work out some of it on the fly just by how the visual impression of it, how I think it's going, you know. Hi, Sue. A Korean student, welcome. Interested in oil painting, so I usually watch this channel. Oh, great. <laughs> Still a beginner. Yeah, that's cool. Your English, I have to say, is a lot better than my Korean. In fact, I know almost no Korean at all. I'm trying to think. I used to like uh, watching quite a lot of Korean dramas, the historical dramas, especially the series. Um, I, I shouldn't say anything, should I? Because I'll get it. Hope I'll get it terribly wrong. But people used to say "krom" a lot. <laughs> Please, please add the Korean subtitle function. I don't know how to do it. Um, I don't know if I can do it live. And also, I've got an accent as well, so my English probably isn't all that clear. I will look into it and I'll try. Michelle says, for the light, since titanium will cool it down, what about starting with a yellower orange? <gasps> Ooh, that's an interesting idea. Let's take cadmium. Yellow. And permanent orange, which will raise the value. It will give me slightly higher chroma. Yeah, you're absolutely right. At a higher value. The thing is, I still think the titanium is going to knock the chroma, but let's see. Actually, that looks good. I think I like this, Michelle. What value am I? About an eight. A bit more white. I think it. Ha I think it's. It. I wouldn't say it's like earth-shattering difference, but I think it does have a little bit more chroma at that value. Top tip from Michelle. Maybe this is slightly lower value than these, but it does appear to have a little more chroma. Thank you. So I'm going to bear that in mind as I paint. That was with a titanium white, by the way. Interesting. As I say, it's not it's not like a world of difference, but it is it's it squeezes a little bit more chroma out of it, it does seem to, yeah.
<laughs> I'm from the UK too. All right. What's I going to do? I was going to show you the panel, I think. Caught up with the comments. Let's take that off. We'll take that off. No, wrong one. We'll take that off. Um, and let me change what I've got set over here. Technology, wonderful, wonderful thing. Right. So this is my panel. Uh, now you've got an idea of scale. Um, it's almost as big as the painting is going to be. Not quite, but close. Why would I do it that big? Well, like, it's a colour sketch, right? So why don't I do a little one? Well, I'll tell you why I, I've decided to do it this way. is because I find if you do colour sketches very small, the compositional effect is slightly different. And it's not all, it doesn't always look the same. If you take a small scholar, colour sketch and then make a bigger painting from it, it doesn't always work in exactly the same way. That's a personal subjective feeling. So this is an ampersand panel. It's not as big as the painting is going to be, but it's about two thirds of the size. So that's one edge and that's the other edge. And I don't think I've, I've got my camera back far enough to get the whole thing on there. But hopefully, um, kind of give you some idea. So I'm going to be like mostly interested in color relationships. One of the things that I'm really interested in figuring out with this, obviously I haven't mixed anywhere near enough paint here, I've only just got little dabs, but one of the things I'm interested in figuring out is um, what value I, I'm going to use for the background, because that will probably change a little bit. So let's say there's an interesting bit of the of the composition where that there's that very light cream cream rose on the left hand side. Um, see, I want to go in with a very high value for that. I want to go in with like a, a nine, but but I'm I can't. I've gone slightly above an eight. I reckon. So from here on in, because I'm changing the color relationships a little bit, the chroma is very low there. I'm not actually going to be following exactly what the colors on the photo are. We'll be changing them. So if that is the middle, that's I'm trying to figure out where this shape comes. So I've got a version of this photo up on my screen that has a grid on it so I can kind of see, get a rough idea of where things are. So if I just put this dab straight on there, it's going to look quite dark. Because the panel is, it's an ampersand panel and it's very uh, clean, you know, white. I definitely need to change some things about my studio setup because I can't, I've just realized I can't really paint and see the screen at the same time, which is always a bit of a pain because I have to monitor the stream at the same time as paint and talk. <laughs> I used to find this really hard, but I've kind of got used to it now. I don't think I'll ever find it easy. Just bringing up the video on my laptop, which is next to my. Yeah, now I can see it.
So, yeah, I mean, that would really throw you, right? So interesting comment someone has just put here. Hi, Sue. I'm sorry if I've pronounced your name wrong. I'm sure I have, but she says it's been about a week since I started oil painting, but it's too difficult. Cry, cry. Yeah, you know, I, I've been doing it for se uh, several decades and it's still hard. Um, and, um, you know, with oil painting, you kind of need to understand that um, you are on a journey of many years. And it is really, really rewarding, a really rewarding one but it can also be an extremely frustrating one too. So there's some highlights. Let's pick up Michelle's orange and see how that looks next to that. Yeah, you see that's kind of a similar, similar value for the light part there. I've got some darker parts of the rose there too. Uh, yeah, it is. It is really hard. There's no two ways about it. It's not like, you know, I mean, you will see people out there with tutorials and courses and stuff telling you that you can learn this like really quickly. You just can't. You know, I, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that this stuff is easy because it really isn't. Um, but there are a lot of really good resources out there now. So that would be light part of a rose, a slightly darker part of the rose. I'm just kind of scrubbing these colours on so I can see, get an idea of how they're going to work. And then I can put a, start thinking about, oh, start thinking about a background. Um, the background is very low chroma, slightly reddish. Let's get some black out. Um, I, would, I would really recommend uh, working just in value to start with, with oil paints, almost like drawing with paint, <clears throat> um, mass value studies for a while. You know, there's so much going on when you're painting with oils. Uh, it is difficult to keep all of those things in your mind at once. Um, and you can make some really, really beautiful value only paintings that will keep you interested, keep you learning, Improve the accuracy of your drawing and your values and, and um, massing in values and edge handling and all of that stuff, you know, before you even try with color. I would honestly say I think going in with color straight away with oils, if you're, if you're, if you're not already like uh, really quite skilled with drawing, is probably, you're probably um, jumping in too quickly. I'm going to put some blue red in with this. Quinacridone rose. So I'm not convinced, I'm not 100% certain what value I'm going to want. I think that's about five. I don't know where I'm going to want to go with the background value. So I'm going to go slightly lighter for now. Just scrub a little bit of that in. And it's funny how, like, immediately you put something down, uh, everything changes, you know. The, you put a different color down, the perception of the color that you've already got is, is completely changed. I'm 
right? Not and get any further than just playing with this little area today, but I just want to get started with some color on there. Get, start to see some colors up against each other and see what I think might happen. So I feel like I need to get enough background around those colors to be able to see how that's going to work. So I say I'm not, I haven't decided what exactly how I'm going to treat the value I suspect because it's around the middle range around the middle of the value range I'm probably going to be end up painting the background slightly lighter than it appears on the reference much of it because I want my values to come up the range quite quickly so that I've got um, a lighter painting overall I was talking about the value balance earlier on um, it's kind of a, it's not that easy a, a concept to describe unless you've actually done it. I've taught it a few times and it's interesting. I mean, it's not, it's not difficult to teach, but it's one of those things you need to do really more than just hear about So what value am I getting there? Because this is a little bit transparent, it's going to be slightly higher. So that's like about a value six. So that's definitely, I can go lower than that. But I do want the overall kind of feeling, if you like, of this painting to be sort of breezy and light. And I'm, I'm not really drawing, I'm just trying to get shapes in um, and, and to begin to see colour relationships really. And I want to put in as well what's going to be my lowest value <coughs> which is the green of the leaves so this is ivory black bright yellow lake which is an uh, an uh, from michael harding is an aralide yellow it's a bit like hansa yellow staining organic pigment that gives me a low value, high chroma, as high, pretty much as I can get at that value, yellow, green. There's lots of different ways of making a lot of these colors. This is just a mix I like, <clears throat> and I know well. And then I'm, it's a little bit too yellow green, so I'm going to put some fallow green in it, and that will raise the chroma too, and send it a bit more towards blue green. It won't cover all that well because um, I've got two staining colors, but the black gives it a bit of opacity. So this is like right down the bottom of the value range and this is the leaves. So it's not that I'm painting in a higher key and I'm going to paint everything light, I'm not. So the bottom values will be where the bottom value should be. It's just that then I will go up the value range quickly. So something that should be around a middle value will end up being like a step or so higher, probably.
Now we've got a dark note, it makes the background look different. Get this out of the way. So I've roughly got things like, here is my orange roses, here is my cream roses, and here is my background and my leaves. It's going to be a little while before I've got enough on here to start to see. Um, but I'm, the relationships are starting to appear here. So, that, I mean, this original note that I put on um, now looks significantly lighter than it did when I first put it on, of course. But, um, oops, put the wrong paint in the wrong, wrong colour, wrong brush. But it's um, because I've got a lot of white still. You're still seeing that color in relation to the white that's there. So it still looks dark in, in comparison to that, if that makes sense. We try to catch up with the comments. Oh, by the way, if you if you watch on Facebook, I've just I've noticed this before. If you watch on Facebook and you leave a comment, basically I, I use this software called Restream, which is an online thing, allows me to stream to Facebook and YouTube at the same time, um, and it aggregates the comments from both, but it doesn't pick up all of Facebook's comments, so I might not see what you say. Hello, Simon. Could you please repeat what colours you've got on your palette, particularly the yellow at the top and the red in the middle? Yes, I can. Um, titanium white, lead white, bright yellow lake, which is an hour-allied yellow, a green yellow staining organic, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre. Have I used that yet? Not sure. Um, permanent orange, another staining organic colour. This is pyrrole red, which I haven't used yet. Probably not going to. Um, this is quinacridone rose, another staining colour. I use a lot of staining colours, actually, as you can see, because I like the chroma. Um, but I don't use them on their own. They're usually mixed into, like, opaque colours, like um, black, raw umber and white. Quinacridone rose, transparent red oxide, raw umber, ivory black, and that's a thalo green. Nothing blue in this painting, so I won't be putting any blues out. So while I'm messing about with these colours, I'm, I'm deliberately squinting and not looking at any kind of form. I'm just trying to put colours in roughly the right place, basically. 
just putting colors up against each other and see trying to see how they're going to work Denise says have you got a pencil sketch on the canvas no I'm just going straight in I mean it's just a color sketch this I'm not actually doing the painting I just want to work out some colors so um, I haven't bothered drawing anything out I, I to be honest with you I don't really anyway I tend to just go pretty much go straight in anyway I'm not saying that you should you know it, uh, you've got to be fairly confident of your your drawing you know and also to be fair I don't really get too wound up if my drawing is slightly out early on because <laughs> you know I can always change it uh, I I used to do that kind of that kind of more careful work where you you put together like a you know a careful line drawing and then and then you paint over it <coughs> i have done that before it's a nice way to work but i don't these days don't got the patience i think <laughs> i'm kidding but it's yeah i i this in any case is is just a, uh, a sketch to try and work some things out so oh I did use a little bit of yellow ochre in the light in the light color for the cream roses so I'm trying to see this light area this is the bit that's really interesting me because as I build up colors around it, I want this to start to appear more as a as a light, and it is beginning to happen. It's, it is beginning to come. I want to actually let's try. If I had a light background color down here. Going up to that green. And then it can go a little bit darker on the other side. Put more red in it. Another annoying thing about Facebook is I used to have some background music on my streams and I, I really liked having it. Just a bit of gentle piano music for when I was zoned out and not talking. And um, I paid the composer of this piece, uh, you know, for the rights to use the music on my streams. And then every time now, every time I put it on on Facebook, Facebook says there's a copyright issue with my stream and it mutes the stream. You know, I sometimes think the world would be a better place without Facebook, frankly. Probably going to get shadow banned now. All of these trigger words coming out on my, <laughs> on my live stream might have to follow me on YouTube. So I know the background gets darker over there, so I'm just kind of starting to get that started.
I, I think um, I would guardedly say from the color point of view so far so good dropping the values a little bit on the lights and then trying to make everything else fit with it using a kind of an impressionist color balance where the values go up the range quite high so far so good So that will actually be, the shadows down here will be slightly lighter, probably. So the very lowest values will be is basically the leaves and they will be where they are and, and then immediately every other value after that, every value higher than that, I'm going to notch up a little bit so I'm compressing the values in the lights. So I end up with a, a slightly lighter, a slightly lighter painting overall. Uh, which is kind of maybe a little bit, I don't know for sure if it's going to work out yet. Because um, you know, I've also dropped the value in the light, so I'm compressing it both ways, which may or may not work. One thing I haven't got in yet is a shadow colour for one of the orange roses. Donelda says, wow, you have so many projects. Uh, frankly, too many. I'm given to enthusiasms and um, do get a bit carried away sometimes. I'm the first to admit it. But there's so much interesting stuff to do. <laughs> I can't. It's hard to, to. And for anyone who here who is on the coaching program, I am. I put tomorrow and Friday aside just to get my emails out to you that I've been putting together. Right, so this is like shadow. This is very low value, almost as low as the uh, almost as low value as the leave. So I'm keeping that value low. Um, there's some there's some shadow, a couple of shadow areas in the in the middle of the bunch of flowers and um, I'm going to deliberately do those shadows slightly lighter too dark that's also possibly an opportunity for me to push the chroma a little bit there in order to make the painting a bit more vibrant. vibrant.
So the shadow areas of the of the cream roses, because they're, they're around the middle of the value range, though, will end up probably being a little lighter. Just a sort of making like a mo kind of like a mosaic, really, so I can see the colors working. Not bothered about form or anything like that. I'm not really or thinking too much about composition at the moment. Really just trying to see colours working against each other. It's probably because I've decided to do it quite big. It's going to be some time with this, probably at least a couple of longish sessions before I can see this starting to come together. And really get an impression of how these colors are going to work. I think it is slowly starting to appear though. I want to get that big green i want to bring this background up i'm not really far enough through to be able to gauge everything yet so once i've got the panel more covered then i'll start making adjustments where i think it's going to be necessary Actually, no, I want just black and white there. Come to the other side of the vase. Lighter. And the white of the cloth, it's actually slightly purple. Dioxazine. And uh, titanium white I'll use for this because I want to. The cloth very cool, purple-ish. But high value um, <clears throat> to off, off, hopefully offset the orange and the warm whites of those roses. Tiny bit of black. So, really, ideally, I would be painting this cloth like really high value, the cloth here in the light, like a value nine, but I can't, I'm not doing that because I've already decided that I pretty much put a ceiling on this of a value eight, eight and a half, so that I can keep the, um, the chroma in the lights of the orange roses. So the cloth therefore needs to be similar value.
I actually really I quite enjoy painting like this, like. Just color. Relationships. And it's more fun doing it big. <laughs> I'm not being very careful with the drawing, obviously. But I am trying to put things in roughly the right place, at least. I'm not a complete barbarian, my gosh. Excuse me. That's in the wrong place. <laughs>
So I've got a load of stuff over here too low. Needs to be moved up. Perils are just whizzing in and not drawing anything out first. So that big shadow there is way too low. I was surprised I got that that badly out. Thank you. 
Right. I think we're getting there. I'm starting to see uh, the, the change basically that I'm looking for really is to start to see this as a light, this bit here, and that is starting to come now, bit by bit. And the more I, I, these jigsaw pieces start fitting together, the more that starts to appear as a light shape. Which is basically what the question I wanted to ask is like, if I drop the value of the lights of the orange roses, and then I, the, I drop the value of the lights of the cream ones a little bit to fit as well, as well as pushing the values up overall, apart from the low values, will it work? And... Um, I think the answer is probably uh, yes, but I, it's just, I would say that kind of guardedly at the moment, because I think there's still quite a bit to do to be sure whether that's going to be the case or not. Um, but I want it to, overall, I want it to appear light and fresh. I mean, when I come in to paint, do the actual painting, I mean, I'm going to be working very, a lot more carefully on that, obviously. it's, uh, And I will be using, like, the, the method that I mostly paint with now, which is... Uh, wipe out first to establish the light and shadow and the drawing um, followed by uh, beginning to apply the color sanding depth layers you know I'll be doing all of that but I'm going to be doing it in something in a piece which hopefully is going to be overall um, lighter and a bit more fresh and breezy and approaching it in this way, I hope to have a painting that I'm pleased with and a happy client. Sorry, I've just realized I've been painting for ages and just concentrating on what I'm doing and I've completely ignored the chat messages. I do apologize. It, but it does get a little bit like that sometimes when you're, when you're painting live and you... Sometimes you just forget you've got the cameras on you. When you get involved in what you're doing. Because I'm, you know, the...
the jigsaw puzzle is is almost together now so i can start to see the relationships a bit better and i do think they I, I think they're they're not bad you know we'll do a lot of um kind of tweaking but but i'm mostly i'm squinting down a lot while i'm looking at it you know uh, and trying to get an impression of how the colors are working trying to read the read the colors and see how i think they're working and so far so good i think the this shadow here does need to come down a little sorry sorry i will try to catch up in a minute with the comments um, so this is probably too dark, this background up here, so let's bring this up and see if it will work. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I guess kind of what I'm hoping for is that this version of it that I'm painting here feels like it's got a bit more light in it than, um, than the photo. And then I will go in and resolve the forms a, a bit more until I feel like I'm kind of, I'm getting somewhere near. And if I think it's working, I'm going to, uh, I'll start the actual painting. I'm going to paint this on, al on an aluminium panel because it's going to be quite large. Um, so I want to make sure that it's stable and it shouldn't need the cradling then. So it will still be quite light. I will prime the panel first with um, oil primer, so I have a nice surface to work on. Yeah, this I like this part here. That's feeling like a light in the shadow, which is what I would want there. Need those shadows to work. Let me try and catch up. Uh, just wondering if the light source is on the left, then it seems the background on the right should be lighter than the left side. If the light source is on the left, then it seems the background on the right should be lighter than the left side. Um, not in this case, because the light is coming in from here and the light source is on the left. So this, the background panel is pretty much parallel to the light coming in. So there's a little bit more light on the left hand side and it drops off over to the right. And there's also a shadow cast by the bouquet of flowers on the um, on the background there, which I haven't really put in too strongly. So this, so the the, the flowers are actually close to what you might think of as the back wall, you know, in terms of the um, the setup. So there's a, ca a shadow cast by the flowers onto the background. Gosh, you're right, David. T 
tea has completely gone cold. At least I didn't put my brushes in it. <laughs> Alison says, I'm constantly making tea when I'm painting. It gets cold too quick. I know, right? The one good thing about coffee, I find, is that you can actually... Coffee's not too bad if you drink it cold still. Tea, not so much. Tea, not so much. It looks beautiful already, says KJW. Thank you. That's a nice thing to say. Well, it's very loose. It is literally just colours. It's just colours at the moment. That's all and I'm trying to figure out. Um, but I, it's colours that I think I'm going to like to live with. Because, you know, it's going to take a little while, the composition. I'm going to be living with these colours for a little while. And I think I, I like where it's going. Claudia, hi. So different from the way you usually demo a painting. Yeah, well, I'm not demoing it. It's just, you know, I'm just painting. Um, I'm just trying to figure stuff out. Uh, this is like, like these streams that I'm doing at the moment. I didn't do one yesterday, actually, even though I meant to. Sorry about that. <coughs> by the by, it was just one of those days where I just didn't want to put the cameras on and be, and be live. They're, they, those days happen. Um, but anyway, these streams that I'm doing at the moment, it's basically you get whatever I happen to be doing at the time. <laughs> and at the moment, I'm making a start on this commission. So I'm doing the colour sketch for the commission. This is by no means the way that I would normally paint to produce a finished painting. Although potentially I could paint over this and not use it as a start. Actually, that might be interesting to start it this way with a lot of freshness and immediacy, and then work over it. That might be, hmm. have I done that before? But the actual painting is gonna be like a third larger than this anyway, so, you know. But yeah, I don't normally paint like this. I'm, I, I'm literally just trying to get colors down and values and see how they're gonna to work together. Into adjustment phase. I want um, darker shadow there. Too, that's too much. Bit too much. I think I've pushed. I've I've maybe pushed the the shadows on the cream roses too light, maybe a little bit. Not sure though, because I don't want to lose, I, I really want to have that strong effect of light in the shadows. So let's not be losing that which I have a bit there. That's better. This isn't how I, how I paint when I'm doing a finished painting, but this is how I paint when I'm doing a colour sketch. Just figuring things out. So I guess I, I just wanted to be sure that if I use this kind of value balance, the value scheme and, and approach to the colour that I'm thinking about, um, that it will it will work. I don't want to spend like two weeks intensively on a painting and then find that you know the color balance isn't working. I'm not happy. I can't figure out. You know when you get into that stage sometimes with the painting, you can't figure out what's not working. You know something's not right. You know um, this is basically just to avoid me getting into that horrible place. Hopefully, very little white. Very little white canvas left now, white panel left, so I can see a lot better how the colours are working. Yeah, and if I squint down, I think that's looking quite nice. It's kind of lighter overall than the reference photo, but the low values are the, are the same, which is where I wanted to be. 
This is reading nice as a light. I think the camera may be a little bit overexposed, but I'm not, I'm not sure. This has got a bit too much chroma here, a bit too brown. That should be a little um, grayer, let's say. A little more towards neutral. Push the chroma too much there, that's better. Because I want it to be, I don't want it to look like an old master type painting. I want it to have an impressionist kind of approach to colour, but there will be some areas of it that are, are very carefully, very carefully uh, painted as well. I think that's that's probably enough at this point for me to for me to judge. What I may do actually now I've got this far with this one, I may use this one as a as I may paint this paint more layers over this as I work on the other one and use this one as a tester for things as I go. Um because obviously I want this to be a really strong piece of work because uh you know, it's nice to get a commission. But I think this is as far as I, probably as far as I need to take it for now. Do Chump says, any tips, suggestions for commission anxiety? <laughs> uh, hmm, that's an interesting question. I'm, uh, I'm not anxious about this. I think probably the only tip I can give you is uh, is to paint for a long time until you get to a point where you feel pretty sure about what you're producing. Um, I mean, I, I know, let's put it this way, I know I can produce an impressive but uninspiring piece of work now. I know I have the skills to do that. I don't want to do that with this commission. I want to produce an inspiring piece of work. You know, I want to push it a little bit further than that. But I know that I can, I, I, I've learned enough basic painting and drawing and colour mixing and all of that in order to make a convincing piece of work, you know, something that looks like what it's supposed to be and that people will be impressed with. It's taken me a very, very long time and a lot of frustration and struggle to get to that point. Um, but this I want to be a little bit more. So, I mean, what am I saying? I don't know, really. Uh, when I used to, I'm thinking back to when I used to paint murals. I mentioned earlier on I used to paint murals. And I was always in a blind panic because I knew really that I didn't have the skills to do what I was, what I was being paid to do. Uh, my drawing skills were pretty rubbish. I mean, I'd just been kicked out of art school. I had almost no, no basic skills. You know, they didn't teach anything, really. And... Um, I was aware of, of how, how much, how short I fell. And I was painting these huge things on enormous walls in um, restaurants and motorway service stations and things like that, that, you know, hundreds and thousands of people were seeing. And I was ashamed of the work I was producing. And then I found that very difficult, you know. Um, and I decided when I turned 40 that I was going to spend the rest of my life, devote the rest of my life to becoming as good a painter as I could. And I've done my best to do that, and I'm continuing to do that. I think, regardedly speaking, I'm starting to get somewhere now. Um, I don't know if any of this is helping you at all. And I, I'm not nervous about this commission now. Um, put it this way, if, if, if the client doesn't like it, <coughs> Um, then I will think it's their fault. <laughs> as long as I'm happy with the piece of work that I've produced, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's hope the client isn't watching. <laughs> Kelly says, I love these colors. Me too, actually. I think they're, they're, they're turning out really nicely, the colors. They're, they're, they're a bit fresher in the painting than they are in the reference photo, and I like that. Shirley Ann says, this is simply brilliant. 
Thank you. I don't think I'll start another painting without creating this kind of colour study first. You're very welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, that's like, what? how long have I been on this? Two hours? You know, that's a couple of hours well spent. I could actually make this into a painting from this point. You know, as I say, I'm kind of tempted, actually, in a way, you know, to carry on working on this and to have it, because it is the, the, it's not as big as the, the commission is going to be, but it is the right proportions. So, you know, I once had an Instagram commission in which a guy wanted me to paint his then fiance in watercolour. Oh, that's difficult. That one. Because they're going to give you their own reference photo, right? And it's going to be a rubbish reference photo, which is terrible to paint from. Guaranteed. <clears throat> I asked him if he'd seen my work and tried to talk him out of it. 99% of my portraits were old creepy guys. <laughs> Brilliant. Well paint old creepy guys. In the end he said he couldn't give it to him. Well, I, you know, I bet you what, do chump, I bet you, I bet you, you had a very poor reference photo to work from. I bet it was just a snap, right? Not properly lit, not properly set up, not something that you would choose yourself to paint anyway, and not inspiring. You know, they go that way, don't they? If you start from a, you know, um, if you're from a, start from a, a less auspicious starting point, let's say, with the reference material not being good. You know, you just got to move on. Stuff like that happens. You just got to move on. Um, if you feel that you, you didn't, if you feel yourself that you didn't produce a good enough piece of work, then, um, you know, ask yourself what skills you, you, you are lacking that you need to develop and find a way to develop them. But, you know, I'm willing to bet that the reference was really poor and that was the biggest problem. Michael says, I joined late. That's all right. Welcome, Michael. The colours and chromas look fantastic, more vibrant than the reference. Brilliant, because that's exactly what I'm trying to do. <laughs> that is, you couldn't have made me happier because that's what I want. I want to produce for my client a vibrant, happy, colourful painting. You know, that's what she wants and that's what I want to make. Matthew says, it's been an interesting process to see the relationship shift as the panel fills in. Yeah, it's because, yeah, because we do see everything relative to what's around it. So, But, you know, I did all that thinking at the start. Like, I'm, I think I'm probably quite an intellectual sort of painter, um, OCD even. I tend, you know, I think about colour a lot. I don't just steam in. And um, so I had a plan. I would guardedly say it seems that the plan has, has worked out for this painting or is going to work out, that the plan is going to work out when I come to the final painting. I certainly hope so. Looks like it might. Um, <clears throat> uh, but it's not like I don't just like whack it in and then see how it works out. You know, I, I knew that I needed to drop the value. It, of the lights if I was going to keep the chroma. I didn't have any choice about that and it seems to have gone all right. And then everything else has to work with it, had to be changed to work with it. You know. Jean says, did you oil out the surface before you started? No, but I did use a fair amount of um, oil as I painted where I wanted to cover big areas quickly. So that's partly why it's got that kind of very washy sort of loose. There's quite a bit of oil with a little bit of turps mixed with it in you know that I was just dabbing in as I was painting and if you can see it, it oh it actually wasn't on the it's this wasn't on the shot um, but yeah I was constantly dipping my brushes in that to keep it flowing who's this lowest great person I'm kidding <laughs> I'm kidding. So, yeah, this is interesting. Irene says, bold and loose, yeah. And, you know, there's a, a lot of advice out there on the internet about how to work more loosely. You know, I think the best thing to do if you want to work loose is, is nail your drawing first. And then you've got the confidence to work loosely without messing something up. Learn everything you possibly can about colour and colour mixing. And then you've got the confidence to make sure that you're, you're putting down colour with a plan rather than just... Um, stabbing in the dark and putting down dirty mixes that you you put too many different colorants in 
you know, um, it's basically, and then once you've, once you've got all that, then you can loosen up as much as you like and you can be fairly confident that you're not going to make too much of a mess, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. Simon says, if they don't like it, let me know. It'll have a place on my wall. Well, you never know. The, the color study may be worked on some more, and that, and that may become a painting too. It's also the client's responsibility to know that they like your stuff. Absolutely. I mean, I'm joking with all of that stuff. I, I am thinking very much about the client, and I want to make her something that she wants, that she's going to be happy with. But she has spent a long time looking through my, my work. That's, I very, very rarely take commissions. Um, but she had looked at my paintings and she wanted my paintings. She, she, she knew what she wanted and it was based on what she'd seen of my work, not like, I want, can you do me something like this? I've actually had people send me other people's work and say, can you do me something like this? And it is so desperately insulting. Like, how dare you? Just no idea. Um, but no, this client is, um, is brilliant. And she, she knows what she wants, and it was based on the paintings of mine that she'd seen, so I, I don't anticipate too many problems. Sasha says, have you cut titanium white with zinc white before? I have no lead white here. Titanium is so deadening for petals. Yeah, that's the chroma problem. When you say it's deadening, that's the chroma problem. Um, basically because it, um, Titanium is very opaque, so you use a lot less in mixes to go up the value range, but it's also, it, it can knock the chroma right back in, in yellows and oranges. So no, and I wouldn't use zinc, and I, I only use lead white. Granted, not everybody wants to use lead white, and I understand that. But I wouldn't use zinc because I'm worried about reports I've read of it being very brittle. Probably doesn't matter on a panel so much, but definitely not on canvas. Thanks, Claudia. Maybe I will. <laughs> do thank you for that story of your <laughs> of your commission i really i mean it must have been really stressful and horrible at the time you know i don't mean to make light of it i've been in situations where i've done work that i i thought myself wasn't very good before you know but i'm glad that you feel that that was a good piece and that it was just it was their problem you know i'm sure you're right thank you denise was the orange Perinoni orange, I've never heard of that, or permanent orange. It's permanent orange from Michael Harding, this one here. And I bought an enormous tube of this years ago, and because it's so high chrome, I hardly ever use any of it. I've had this, God knows, 10 years or more. Hmm. You're very welcome, Sasha. Okay, so I'm going to turn the cameras off now. I'm going to go and have my dinner, because it's getting a little bit late. At the very least, I need a cup of tea. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. I hope that was fun. As I say, I very rarely paint like this, like throwing something together this quickly, like fairly quickly. Um, maybe I should do more. Quite enjoyed it myself. Anyway, we'll see what happens tomorrow. There'll be another live stream tomorrow, probably, assuming that I don't have one of those days where I just don't feel up to it. I do have those. Um, but otherwise, I will be doing a stream probably about sometime between 4 and 6 UK time. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.